Sometime in the next 15 years, the end will come. And by the end, I mean an utter breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity. At the basis of it all is this colossal increase in the human population. It's one of, of, the, of the living species of the planet, but it's, it's reaching plague proportions. And our cities are going to be choked with people. They're going to be choked with traffic. They're going to be choked with crime. They're going to be choked with pollution. And they will be impossible places in which to live, and the explosions will be even worse. Uh, what do you think is, is a viable figure that, that Gaia, that the planet, can sustain? I would guess, living the way we do, uh, not more than one billion, probably less. It's largely a matter you, you of how you You say that with live. equanimity, but that, that's, that's uh, postulating the most dramatic and terrible and unimaginable sort of cull of the human species. Well, I'm stick by it. I think it will happen. A good example is we said uh, in one of our publications that it would be uh, one of the things that might be good if you could do it safely and biologically safely would be to add something to the water supply, excuse my laryngitis, add something to the water supply that would make you have to take an antidote before you could have a baby. Dire predictions of an overpopulated planet have been with us for centuries. What if they're just plain wrong? Birth rates in the USA have dropped to their lowest annual levels in three decades, falling for nearly every group of women. A startling study with potentially profound consequences for the world. Published by Lancet, the scientific review found that fertility rates had fallen dramatically, meaning that many countries are now on the verge of a baby bust. One shoreline town considering shutting down a school following a decline in student enrollment there. Madison officials say for the last several years they have seen those numbers go down steadily. It's happening in rural areas all over the country, including here in the River Valley School District in central Wisconsin, which shuttered elementary schools in two towns in the last two years. Enrollment numbers are down not only in West Seneca, but in Western New York. Some schools leaders believe it's due to a few factors. Part of the reason for the reorganization is lower student population. In 1975, West Seneca Central School District had over 15,000 students. Now they're down to about 6,000. Cleveland School CEO Eric Gordon announcing a major downsizing plan for the entire district, and it includes several school closures and mergers. I want you to look at this map right here because all of these schools in red could be on the chopping block, like this one right here, Collinwood High School and as many as 10 other elementary and high schools across the city. Plummeting enrollment numbers over the last few years are to blame for the proposed changes. Like many other school districts in Connecticut, the Madison Public School District is facing declining enrollment. It's a national trend. Birth rates have been down um, across the entire country. World population prediction. There it is in 2017 at 7.6 billion, and it goes up the year 2030 to 8.6 by the midway part of the century to 9.8 billion, and as John just suggested, by the end of the 21st century, 11.2 billion people on this planet. Okay, Mr. Bricker, what do you think of the prognostication? Well, it's all based on a model that has a lot of problems with it. Mm -hmm. Great about the birth rate, which, which you alluded to earlier. The, uh, the contrary to, like mo most people think we, we have like too many people on the planet, but actually this is, uh, this is an outdated view. This is uh, the, the Assuming that AI is fine, assuming that AI is, there's a benevolent future with AI, um, I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Yes. Collapse. I, agree. I want to emphasize this. The biggest issue in 20 years will be population collapse. Not explosion, collapse. I think it's a bit of a joke the way uh, people have uh, made this overpopulation thing into a kind of myth. I don't really believe it, you know. I think whatever happens will balance itself out and work itself out. And it's all right for us all living saying, oh, well, there's enough of us, so we won't have any more. Don't let anybody else live. Mm. I don't believe in that. I think we've got enough food and money to feed everybody. You, you mean you think there's enough if it were Yeah, I don't believe overpopulation, you know. I, I think that's just a kind of myth that uh, the government has thrown out to keep your mind off Vietnam and Ireland and all the important subjects. Oh, I think you're wrong about that. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> well, the interesting thing in the world of demography is people, I think, are making facts into political statements these days. So yeah, you really have to 
take a look at those facts and, and, and look at whether they really have any scientific basis. Now the UN tells us that the world's going to reach 11.2 billion people by the year 2100. That's a pretty major increase in the global population. But when you really sit down and take a look at it, it's pretty hard to see how we get to uh, 11.2 billion people because basically what's happened in the world is fertility rates, birth rates have collapsed. The, it's very easy to see what the world will look like in 20 years because humans have a 20-year boot sequence. So like you say, okay, well, who was born last year? Okay, now you know what the world looked like in 20 years. It's that easy. I absolutely agree with that. The, uh, the population problem is going to be facing huge challenge. 1.4 billion people in China sounds a lot, but it, I think next 20 years we'll see this thing will bring big trouble to China and the population decreasing of the whole... The speed of population decreasing is going to speed up. Yeah. And you call it collapse. I, Ex I agree accelerating with that. Collapse. Accelerating collapse. Accelerating collapse. <laughs> and then, and then uh, the, the, the common rebuttal is like, well, what about immigration? Like, from where? There isn't a significant country in the world that's experienced an increase in birth rates for the last 50 years. So the idea that you know, we're expanding the number of children being born in the world is simply not true. Uh, if you take a look at the top 10 po most populous countries in the world, since 1960 they've lost half of their fertility. What do they put it down to? Right, so yes, as you say, across Europe, no, no country is actually having enough children. Um, Australia, it's a big problem, the US, um, even parts of, you know, for, for example, uh, developed economies in Asia, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, huge issues there. It's a country with one of the lowest birth rates in the world. The government of Singapore is so concerned that it's paying for people's dates to encourage marriage and hopefully babies. Japan is shrinking, literally. I'm scared for the future of my children and my country. A demographic time bomb has already exploded. China, with the world's largest population, faces a possible population crisis. Official figures indicate the nation's birth rate has dropped to its lowest in the 70 years of the country, despite the government's efforts to loosen population control measures. You know, talk to us a little bit about the Chinese demographic, which a lot of American strategists are constantly focused on. Well, you know, depending on the estimates you want to accept, the Chinese population is going to decline somewhere between 300 and 500 million, million people before the end of the century. And the reason for that is their birth rate is almost non-existent, even though they got rid of the one-child policy a couple of years ago. But also uh, the, um, the shape of the population has changed. So in 1950, the average Chinese person lived to the age of 40. Today, they live somewhere in their late 70s into their early 80s. That means that most of the population growth that's happening in China right now, the, the remaining population growth, is coming as a result of people aging, not because a lot of kids are being born. And of course, the problem with that is, after the age of about 45, uh, very difficult for women to have, have children without big medical intervention. So a growing population that's elderly, a shrinking population that's younger, that's a population that's in a position where it could collapse. Welcome back. We switch to Europe now where countries there are taking drastic steps to replenish their shrinking workforces. Guy Henderson takes a look at Germany. That this country has one of the most rapidly declining populations of any country in the world. By some estimates, in the year 2060, there'll be 20 million fewer Germans inside Germany than there are today. Town centre is charming, but it's empty. The same is true for the neighbouring villages. There are empty houses everywhere. Since 2005, we've been tearing down apartments. We've taken around 250 apartments off the market. From the 1,800 we had then, there are now 1,500. You've got a number of countries there that are now in a situation where they're losing population every year. So this is not something that we're talking about that's going to be the future. This is something that's happening right now. And in Russia, the decline in population has been high on the agenda since the breakup of the Soviet Union. Between 1992 and 2009, the country lost about 6 million people, or 4% of its population. In an attempt to combat this, Vladimir Putin introduced schemes to give extra cash to people when they have their second and third children. And if you have seven or more children, you get invited to the Kremlin to receive a medal. Russia 
Мы смогли переломить негативные демографические тенденции в начале 2000-х годов, когда казалось, а тогда страна была в очень сложном положении, тогда казалось, что это вообще сделать невозможно, но мы это сделали. И убежден, что вновь способна это сделать. Иран is on the verge of a crisis. Its population is aging, and its birth rate has dropped to 1%. The Polish Health Ministry has released a video to encourage its citizens to start breeding like rabbits. Poland has one of the lowest birth rates in Europe, and it's resulting in severe population decline. In 2015, the rate was at 1.32 children per woman, with only Portugal having a lower figure, while Spain and Greece were almost the same. While this campaign was seen as very subtle, Europe's declining populations have been tackled before. A Danish travel agency were a little more direct with an advert which went viral, asking would-be grandparents to pay for a holiday for their children so that they are more likely to get grandchildren. But is that essentially, in a nutshell, what it's about? In developed countries, we are having fewer children, and even in developing countries, they're having fewer children. Is that it? Well, the key to that, though, is in developing countries, because the assumption is that what we're talking about in terms of uh, a reduction in fertility in developed countries is, is a pretty well accepted fact now. I mean, you don't even have to go to the numbers, just look at your own families. People are having two kids or fewer. I mean, the, the fertility rate of Canada today is 1.6, but that matches all the Nordic countries, that matches all of Western Europe. And, and in fact, they got there faster and now Europe is basically losing people every year. So everybody knows that, but 40% of the world's population lives in two places. India and China, and when you find out that China's got a birth rate of 1.5 and India has just been reported at a birth rate of 2.1, you sit back and say, well, maybe, maybe we're not going to explode. Oh, it's India, worse, actually. India is at replacement rate. And, and the huh. interesting thing was, when I, I was in India doing the research for the book, Indian demographers were telling me that, but the UN still had India at 2.1. Why does the UN persist? 2.4. Why does the UN persist in putting out information that seems to be incorrect. Well, because they have an extremely conservative view of population modeling. And, mm -hmm. and that extremely conservative view says that if it didn't happen before, it won't happen in the future. It's all based on past estimates and what's happened in countries previously. I don't want to ascribe motive here, but the fact is, you know, the United Nations gets money from countries around the world to deal with population issues. If the notion of overpopulation ceases to be that big an issue, are they worried about not having their bread buttered enough anymore? We don't want to ascribe motive either. <laughs> Continuing our look around the world, let's go to Africa. Kenya. Big birth rate still in Kenya, yes? No. <laughs> not even in no. Kenya. Uh, Kenya's gone, Kenya has gone through uh, an amazing transformation over the space of the last 25 years. So even in the last decade, China, uh, Kenya has gone from a birth rate of roughly around five to somewhere between three and four. Even there, the birth rates are declining. The question is how fast is it going to occur? All of this adds up into a situation in which you, you look for that pocket that's going to create great fertility that's going to say, for example, offset the huge population declines we're experiencing in Asia and we're also experiencing in Europe. Now, and there isn't a pocket. Maybe it's on Mars, but uh, it's not here on Earth. According to county executive in charge of health, Penina Mukabane, the drop is an indication that family planning was bearing fruit in one of the most populated counties in the country. The class six has only five students. When we inquired why the area has very few young children, the headmaster, Mr. Ivan Smonjala, dropped the bombshell. A gathering of men who've been sterilized with the procedure and those who they hope will follow them. Leaders in this region have noticed the worrying trend and have launched a campaign to encourage the residents to bear children. Brazil, where again, one would assume uh, a fertility rate that would be uh, very high, you've got it at 1.8 births per woman, which clearly is not replacement. No, but we couldn't figure this out. 1.8, it is a poor society. It is a society where machismo is still rampant. Women are very much constricted um, in their rights, especially women in, in, in the favelas, in the poorer parts of, this, of the country. Uh, women have babies early in Brazil, which means they should have them often, um, and yet 1.8. It's called shutting down the factory. And sterilization has become one of the most prominent means of birth control in Brazil. Uh, that just, for me, in terms of the unintended consequences of public policy, that's got to win a prize. And by the way, it's the same. It's the same in India. They have the highest rate of sterilization of any country in the year, in the world. So even if they wanted to turn it around, 
They can't. They now. can't. But also, and this is a, a shocking thing about India, we do see it in China. You know, everybody seems to acknowledge that there's a deficit of, of, of women in China. It's the same size deficit in India. Hmm. Same type of cultural exclusion of female uh, children. And by the way, this is we, we are talking about sex-selective abortions. Yeah. We're having more mm -hmm. men than women because they are deciding to have abortions until they get a boy. For the first time in human history, we will be, over time, deliberately culling ourselves by having fewer babies than we need to reproduce. When I look at the negative interest rate phenomena and whatever it is, 20 or 30 trillion dollars in bonds now, I try to think about it and say, well, what is the invisible hand argument? What, what is the actual thing that's taking place, the dynamic that's leading to this being a plausible policy for an academic or an economist? And what I've started to consider is whether the negative interest rates are telling us that we're just going to see a rapid decline in the world's population. The remains of rolling acres in Akron, Ohio. Poster child for a recent phenomenon in America, the dead mall. This one went dark in 2008. Fixtures auctioned off, others swiped or vandalized. Nature now reclaiming more than 50 acres that once hosted Macy's, Victoria's Secret, the Parisian, 140 stores at its peak. While impressive monuments and statues, art and city museums, the Ordos Dongshan Stadium that seats 35,000 people, Opera House, a brand new airport, and a modern design mosque. The city streets are lined with skyscraper after skyscraper that are almost completely empty. Go ahead and drive around. Go ahead. Leave the city. Go ahead and drive around the country and tell me where all the people are. Look at all the houses. Where's all the houses? Where's all of this population that we're told is crawling all over the earth, destroying everything? It's not. There isn't this massive population. This is everyone's packed into these cities and they're controlled by having to go down all these highways and all these roads that have got street lights and everything's all congested and it looks like there's a lot of people because everyone's packed into these tight areas and they're only allowed to walk between the lines. So it looks like it's crowded everywhere, but it's not. There isn't that many people on Earth. No way is there 7 billion people on Earth. You know, I don't believe the UN figures on population. I, I was doing some work on this and you know, I found that the fertility rate in the Philippines declined from three uh, to two, so three kids per family to two, in just 15 years, the last 15 years, whereas in the United States that took 200 years to happen. So we are seeing a, a decline in population. I don't think you can trust the UN figures, which are, are really just meant to juice all of their projects and their goals. And I think that if you look at uh, voting numbers, if you look at the fact that no one's really having babies, uh, younger generation people forming households, who's to say that the world's population can't be 20% uh, less than it is today or 30% less in 100 years? I, I think that's totally plausible. I think demographics is, is a real issue where people are not having kids in a lot of countries. And you know, very often they'll say, oh, I'll solve it with immigration. Immigration from where? If Europe has an average, or many parts of Europe have an average of, of a 50 or 60, you know, they're only at 50 or 60 percent of what's needed for replacement, or China for that matter. They're at half replacement rate. Where exactly are we going to find 600 million people to replace the ones that were never born? I think people are going to have to regard, to some degree, uh, the, the notion of having kids as almost a social duty with, within reason. I mean, it just if you can and you're so inclined, you, sh you, sh you should. You know, it's like, uh, otherwise, Civilization will just die, literally. We are going to face in the mid part of the century, a, and, and particularly the latter part of the century, a demographic implosion, the likes of which we haven't seen, including the Black Plague. The math is obvious. W w when, when did China ever experience a 50% reduction in its population? Never. I mean, basically, pre writing. Okay, because no one's ever written of such a thing. Yeah. Even the Black Plague, yeah. uh, I mean, that, that would, when the Black Plagues would go through, they might, I think that they made, might have demolished like a quarter, mm -hmm. but never a half. Yeah. And, and yet Spain, growth rate of 50%. Right. It, it's, it's, it's as though someone went through and, and, and killed half the population. At this rate, the only thing that'll be left will be robots. Yeah. You know, th three generations of 50% birth rate, of, uh, you know, 50% replacement rate uh, gets you to 12% of where you were. And those, those poor 
12%, all they're going to be doing is taking care of their grandparents. I mean, eventually there just won't be people at that rate. Yeah, I wouldn't mention the third one. <laughs> I hope the AI is nice to us. <laughs>